Well, there was plenty of drama on Sunday night and some of it was off the pitch with the bullpen staging a walkout in the first half. With me here to talk about this today is Aiden from the bullpen. Uh, so Aiden, welcome to Bull Banter. And can you tell me what happened on Sunday night? Well, um, first started when the, about 10 minutes before the game started, um, we had security and police telling us um, that they were not allowing anyone to come in to the bullpen throughout the game because you know how during the second half we start to grow when we're building momentum. They said, no, nah, no one's going to be entering no matter what. Um, we were told throughout, like, it's never been a problem and then all of a sudden they just started craving down on it and we said enough's enough. We'll, we're not taking any more, any more of this. We're trying to grow. We're trying to be the biggest in Australia and they're stopping us. So do you think yeah. it had to do with, um, you know, the club wanting to keep that area ticketed and making sure no one moves across from any other bays? Wasn't the club one bit. It's all, it's all the licensing police and the security and the ground. Camelltown Stadium. Fair enough. So then it happened 10 minutes before the game and then you guys moved to the hill. So what, what, would, what sort of spurred that on? Just a reaction to not having people allowed in? Yeah, so the whole 18 plus thing, we wanted, because most of our, most of the group, the kids, the kids want to join in all those teenagers, they love it. And so like one of our drummers was for the night was um, 17. So he's like, so we're like, nah, we'll move so we can all chant and do everything. So we moved to the hill and the herd loved it. Everyone was getting involved. All the kids loved it. That was on the hill and even the view was better. So yeah. Fair enough. And then um, I guess what prompted you guys to leave the stadium? Because you were on the hill for a little while and then it seemed you sort of quietened yeah. down. There was a bit of security in the area. Uh, what happened to make you guys leave? So security was instructed by the police to um, to tell us to either go back to Bay 1 or leave. So we're like, we're not going to follow because we want everyone in the bullpen. We don't want to be restricted to... Um, less numbers because of what they're um f with the rules they're setting so we are just like no nah, we've had enough so we walked out and we obviously as everyone saw we walked up to west's car park and we made noise and everyone loved it was there anything else yeah. sort of in the lead up before the match that also would have driven i guess your frustrations um that might have caused you to walk out as well or was it just a reaction to the police telling you to go sit back in the bay oh it's just it's a reaction from weeks in and weeks out i mean during the western united game i'll use that as an example when um we scored the second goal we were all were going crazy we were standing jumping chanting and um we we're all hugging each other jumping around next to each other one of the police officers come down and says to one of our members if you keep touch if you keep like putting your hands on everyone like you know how everyone jumps together sh yep. shoulder to shoulder everyone's yep. touching it like not touching each other but like arms around each other yeah she basically said um keep doing that and we'll ban you for the whole season for the rest of the season so that that's an example and from then on it's just been fight after fight so do you think stuff like that comes from i guess a health and safety uh, aspect of covid restrictions still being not really um sorted out in terms of you know, what you can do in a stadium and can't do in a stadium? Or is it more they want to clamp down on any sort of um, boisterousness in, in the active support? Well, I think, what, what was it? Western United was like one of the first games, 100% um, attendance back up, I'm pretty yep. sure. But yeah, we're back to 100% attendance. Everything was back to normal almost. But yeah, like you see with um, every other active support, like... They're always getting harassed by the licensing police and security. But I know the security has been just told what to do, but like, it's just, it's just annoying. We're trying to show our passion for the game that we love. And it sucks that we always get told to stop doing what make like show our passion by all these little things and people trying to control us. Cause like, all we want to do is we want to make a great atmosphere for everyone in the stadium. We want to, um, 
push the players to play their best because I know every, when everyone plays sport and everything, if they start getting chance or something behind them, they perform better. Like it's just basic human nature whenever that happens. So the and the fact that we've been told throughout weeks and weeks from certain um, people that fans hate us, players hate us, and we just think it's. Um, we just think it's all a lie just to try and get us to stop. Like that they don't they don't want an A League team in Campbelltown. Right. So you feel like there's a broader sort of restriction on active support because that is something that is unique to football. Um yeah, rather exactly. than rugby or, or other codes. Exactly, because you've seen rugby league everyone doing the exact same thing. You see videos of people uh, for example, people swearing and all that. They don't get in trouble, and we used we did um, one chant against Brisbane Moral when they scored. We used the word I don't know. Um, Go yeah, ahead, you tell might. us what it was. <laughs> Obviously, wanker. We started saying that, and instantly we got told stop it. Like, where's? I don't see. There's worse words out there in the world, and we used that one because he revved us all up by celebrating in front of us. So what are we going to do? Like, there's. Where's the, where's the ground with A League? Seriously. Fair enough. Well, um, I also wanted to ask you guys, uh, ask you, sorry. After the match, there was uh, a large contingent of the bullpen who stayed back, and you guys were on the bridge, um, still singing out and showing your support of the club, even though you weren't necessarily in the stadium. Um, what happened after the match? Um, so after the match, we, um, so during the match, we obviously got, we we're at the front of the stadium when um charles scored so i don't know if everyone heard us but we got told by police to move on so we we f- were like okay fine we we followed so we went back to there finished the game we came back and we wanted to we wanted to show the fans in the club that we're not doing it just for ourselves we're doing it for the club and for macarthur fc because we we want to be the biggest and if we didn't come back, I feel like everyone would have thought we were just doing it for ourselves and being weak, but we had to show our support no matter what. Like like we always say in our chants, we love you, we love you. Win or lose or follow. Fair enough, mate. Um, as well as that, I wanted to ask you, um, there's been allegations of antisocial behaviour in the bullpen. Can you address these concerns? Um, because, you know, if you're a supporter who hasn't gone to the bullpen before or, you know, doesn't pay too much attention to active support, it can kind of sound, um, you know, really scary. So I wanted to give you an open mic for that one. Can you address those concerns? Um, So all all the allegations, everything that people were hearing, you know, it's all, it's all chatter. Like everyone in the bullpen, we're we're a family, we're, we're brothers and sisters. We all have one goal and that's to, protect MacArthur FC as best as we can like obviously with everything that's going around like we can't control what happens but like all these things that you're hearing like um us apparently abusing 12 year olds and bashing people it's all a lie because we're not about that we just want to support our club actively as possible and it's just, I feel like it's a lot of BS trying to be manipulated to make us look like the bad guys when we're just trying to be like every other active support. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, after Sunday night, because it, it did seem quite dramatic and obviously you guys went up to the car park and you got a decent response from the crowd. Um, and then obviously I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the police came up and put a stop to your activities up on top of the car park in leagues, in the Leagues Club car park. Um. So we could tell as soon as we started chanting up there, we saw the police like radio. I don't know who they radioed, but um, West security just came up straight away. We didn't, they didn't have a problem with us. They're just like, look, we don't want to fight your battles or wars with you. And I'm like, we're like, okay, no worries. Yeah. So we left and we just walked back in front of the stadium. So, yeah. Fair enough. Um, after that dramatic sequence of events has the club actually uh has anyone contacted you guys and talked to you about what happened because it's quite a statement yeah well like we had an instant response like we've been 
the past couple of weeks, we've been obviously throughout weeks, we've been told the club hates us. Like we, we've always thought the club hates us. So we, we've been thinking, oh, we're on our own guys. Like we got to try and defend for ourselves. But like after that, res- after the response we had, we, we have spoken to the club and we've dusted all the feathers and like the club's never hated us. They never have. It was just words by people that we've heard and we just believed it when we shouldn't have. But like the club, the club is, um, they, they obviously want MacArthur to succeed and they know the bullpen is part of that process. Like let's be real. If there's no active support in a team, then the team's dead. In my opinion. Yeah, it's um it definitely adds something to the match day. And you know, you you did notice a difference being there in the stadium when uh the bullpen wasn't there. It was a, a lot, lot quieter. Um yeah. so following up from that, has anything has it just been positive talk so far, or has it been more of a actual solution to whatever um problems you guys were seeking to redress? Um, so I don't want to give too much away, but like obviously, as you know, with the statement we just put out. Um, we finally got rid of the 18 plus, um, bullpen. So anyone can come in now. We've, um, prices have dropped and like, it's only the start. Like you can't expect everything to change in one day. Like we're going to continue frequently talking to the club as best as we can to try and sort out solutions. Cause obviously we're independent, like, um, the way, like, it's hard to say, but, like, all the stuff that's happened throughout the start of the season to now, like, you kind of got quiet. Now it's coming back up, but all we want is for MacArthur to succeed. So, yeah. Yep. i got a couple more questions for you. So, f- coming out of this, I'm assuming you guys will be back. Um, what's the plan for active support from here? Like, both for the rest of the season and into the next couple of years? Um... Well, um, we just gotta we just gotta figure out things, work with everyone, and obviously we need to find ways to beat the not not so the laws, but like we just gotta find ways to make active support grow again because obviously um, a league active support has declined, but. We want to be part of uh, 2.0. We we don't want to drop down and there's no more active support. We want it. We want it back to how it was when MacArthur wasn't around. But we want to be included this time. So yeah. So for the next couple of months, we're going to try. Um, we got to try and get safe smoke approved, but that's going to be very tough. But um, yeah, I reckon the next couple years. I mean. If we make uh, Champions League, then that's a whole different story. But I don't want to give it too much away. It's going to be right, a surprise. Fair enough. So we'll keep our eyes peeled, I suppose, on that one. Um, and the last one, just a bit of an open-ended question. Um, how would you characterise active support now first season? Has it been a success in your eyes? And what changes need to be made to make it more successful? Because obviously it has room to grow. Yeah. Um, do you mean for MacArthur or just in general? Uh, specifically for, yeah, MacArthur. Like, do you think um, you guys have, have hit a good target for based on where you were at the start of the season or um, you'd be disappointed so far? Like, let me know your thoughts. Well, obviously, COVID did have a big impact. I mean, my goals were to um, fill our base as best as we could, but obviously the... The uh, over 18 restriction was tough, but now hopefully, like towards the end of the season, like hopefully we start getting those numbers that we wanted. And at the moment, I feel like it has been a success with especially what happened last week. We're standing our ground and fighting for what we believe in because we don't want active support to die. But yeah, I feel like it's been a success. Definitely ups and downs, but that's the name of the game. Yeah, I suppose it gives you a bit of a platform to build on for next season because with any club, I guess, getting those hardcore supporters in is difficult. Um, yeah. You know, especially being a new club in a market that probably has already, you know, it's got two teams already 
if not even more, you know, broadly looking at um, other New South Wales clubs. So, um, you know, our our team is growing and you, you see it reflected in the, uh, the attendances on the weekends. They're obviously not where we want them to be, but, um, you know, you've got something to build from, I suppose, for next season. Everyone knows who the bullpen are now. So, um, exactly. yeah, you can only go up from there, I suppose. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, Aiden, for joining us and um, letting Bull Banter know all about what went down on Sunday. And we wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. And just be prepared for next year. It's going to be big. (laughs) No worries, mate. We'll catch you later. Thanks for that.